just want it on the top of the bottle, what? Let's go, baby, what's up, internet? We're live streaming right now. Let's go, we're here to party, it's the weekend. Pitar, you ready to go? Sonny, how you feel? Yeah!
Eddie Barbash. How are we feeling tonight? We having fun yet? Yes. I promise it'll be worth it that I am in tune.
Thank you. Well, we're live streaming this event because I'm an internet guy. I love the internet. I have a, a complicated relationship with the internet. That's maybe, you can still love something and have a complicated relationship with it. That is okay. The internet is one of those things for me. One of the things that I really love about the internet, though, is that at any given moment, I can find one of my new favorite bands. And that happened to me earlier this year. So please welcome back to the stage, Truesdale. Hold on, take two, take two. <laughs> Programming error. <laughs> None of you guys stopped me while I was about to introduce. I knew we were doing something. <laughs> I looked at the wrong part of the set list. Uh, strike that from the record. Keel, if you could just cut the tape, pull it back about 45 seconds. Uh, uh, play the last note of meditation. Two. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Boston, we having fun yet? <laughs> We're having a lot of fun, and I sometimes can't believe that this is what we do for our livelihood. It is a true joy. It's an absolute pleasure. Pretty much every day is just feeling like the best. There are several days, though, in the year that feel like work. There's only a handful. But one of the things that we've noticed as we've taken tally of these things, the spreadsheet says all the tough days are the ones where we are in airports or trying to get on airplanes with our instruments. Those are the only days that feel like work. You got, how many of us are we now? 14 people? I don't know. It's a lot. 17, 17 with the bus, with the crew, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of instruments. Kenny, Kenny walks on, he's got, we, we, we pull up to the gate, Kenny's got four saxophones. He ties the cases together with a ratchet strap and says that it's one bag. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Sonny walks up with this radioactive looking bass. What's that emoji strap too? I don't know if any of you can see. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not bringing that thing on the plane. Like, Test it again, like that, no way, that thing. And they see all of us walk up, Bots has a big Barry saxophone, that's not getting on board. Ba bass clarinet, not getting on board. Sometimes the guitar makes it, but I've, I've got uh, a new relationship with my instrument while I will let it go, and if it gets damaged, that's what was supposed to happen. If it gets stolen, that's who is supposed to have the instrument. It's a terrible way to think about it, but I, I have to do it with the amount of traveling that I do. But what we've been doing is we've been thinking about at some point, having a season of the band where we, we try a new band idea called Carry Ons Only. And the whole idea is that everybody in the band plays something that will fit in a carry on. So we're gonna workshop this idea on this tour. So for the next two songs, the only requirement is everything must fit in a carry on. Sonny got a new bass. Martin saw that we were doing this. They're like, <laughs> okay, I, how many Berkeley cats we got in the room? Yeah, I know. I didn't need to ask. You made yourselves obvious from the first song, okay? I respect it. It is very obvious to us who are the musicians in the room by the way that you look at our fingers, the way that you look at the gear. The way that you, ooh, Sonny's upside down and backwards, just like Mono Neon, huh? I can see you thinking that. You don't know that, but I can, I can feel you thinking those things. And because of that, I know that many of you understand what it's like when once a month 
you can you can empathize with me knowing that once a month I clear a call. I never answer the unknown number from Fort Wayne, Indiana. God bless my Sweetwater representative, Anthony. I called him up before this tour. He thought, wow, it's finally paying off. I got the Wong account years ago. He's about to go on tour. They're about to do the thing. They're going to need a bunch of instruments. Nope. I called Anthony. I said, I don't care. It could be the cheapest thing. It doesn't even need to play in tune. Just send me the smallest guitar you have, the smallest drum set, the smallest set of bongos you have. Where are those at? <laughs> Martin saw us doing that. They saw a video. They're like, no way, man. Sonny can't be out there playing. He had this. I won't go into it. When the bass player is out of tune, the whole band is out of tune. By the way, where are the horns? We got some carry-ons for the horns. What are we doing here? Barbash, you got to carry on. Kenny? <laughs> Jay Webb, you're clearly hiding something in there. Come on. Come on, that's the cutest trumpet you've ever seen. It's less than two years old. It flies for free. Bots, you got that? Lampley, what are you doing over there? You on this flight or not? What do we got in the carry-on, bro? What do we got in the carry-on? Is that, does that fit? That's the away. That's the away piece. Military green, halo green, master chief green. Oh, we got a full-size trumpet sneaking on board. That, that's going to work. That's going to play. That's going to play. Jay Webb. Kevin, I need you to stop. There's not an airline in the world that's going to let you bring that B3 on board. Doesn't matter what step. Yeah, yeah, get off the stage, man. You can't, that's not a carry-on.
take two. Keel, you rolling? Stand by and rolling. You know, I'm an internet guy. <laughs> yeah. Go on now. I love the internet. I, I have a complicated relationship with the internet. But I think sometimes it's okay to, to also love something and have a complicated relationship with it. That being said, one of the things that I absolutely love about the internet is that at any moment in time, you could find your new favorite artist. And that happened for me earlier this year. So I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Truesdale. <laughs>
Welcome to the stage, Victor Wooten.
Truesdale!
right, Boston. <laughs>
That's Kevin Gastongway on the keys. Jake Potts on Barry Sax and bass clarinet. Kenny Holman on tenor sax, flute, soprano sax, and piccolo. Eddie Barbash on curved soprano sax and curved alto sax. John Lampley on trumpet and flugel. That's trumpet man Jay Webb. On the trombone, that's Michael Nelson. The Hornheads. On percussion, Nega Santos. <laughs> Pitar Janic on the drums and cymbals. We had the one and only Sonny T with us this evening. Thank you so much, Boston. You are the best, thank you. It means so much that you would be here. It is really a treat to play for you. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Good evening, folks. Tonight's performance was brought to you by Wong Notes Productions. Before the encore starts, we will be holding a live press conference. Corey will be taking questions at the front of the stage. Please raise your hand and prepare your questions for the band. They'll be good in a couple days. Hey, already? Come on, energy. Natural. That's right. That's that natural sugar. Just a sec. We're not ready yet. Good evening, Boston. My name is Corey Wong. Welcome to tonight's press conference. Tonight, I'm here to take full accountability for everything that happened here on this stage. I'm here to talk about the wins, talk about the losses, 
I'm here to discuss every 16th note, take accounting on every 16th note, rest that was missed, every hit that was missed, every half step, mishap. I'm here to take full ownership for, for my misinterpretation of the set list. I want to run this thing down before we get into business. I know there are several members of the press here this evening. We'll get to your questions. I just want to address a handful of things before, uh, be because I know some of this, some what you're going to come at me with, okay? I thought the opening of the set was really nice. We did the 20th century in a lunchtime. That was a nice, nice version. About 4 BPM faster than we normally do, but it was nice to hype the set kind of fast. You feel good about that tempo? Nice little percussion drum breakdown. Did a Fearless Flyers tune called Flyers Direct. That felt good. That felt good tonight. We did Smooth Move. Nice little joint in D flat. A little slower tempo. Keel, if you could take a note for the multi-track going into the second verse, I was off by a string. If you could just pull from the first verse, punch it into the second verse, we should be good. <laughs> Those quarter notes were locking. That's, that's part of the rhythm section test. Every evening we try, to, we try to feel out the audience, try to feel each other's internal clocks. And uh, the, the end of that tune, we kind of come out of time. We try to feel time with each other. We get a little push and pull because sometimes... Uh, the, the internal clock is more reliable or feels better than, than the one that's, that's mechanical, of course. Barbash, end of You Got to Be You. How'd you where were you at, Eddie? How'd you feel about You Got to Be You this evening? Because you've been kind of up and down on stuff. I don't, I don't know where your head's at. I thought I did the best that I could do tonight. I'm reading between the lines. The best that you could do tonight? That's what I do every night. Respect. This is what I do. Respect. This is, this is the first time we played med meditation with me playing the guitar solo on it. We played it once on this tour with Eric Gales. First time playing it tonight. I felt like I really took my time with the pacing. I could have maybe maybe gone a little quicker with the phrasing, but it was also kind of fine. Okay. Hey, look, look here. I, again, I'm here to take ownership of everything going on. It's okay. It's art is subjective. I'm not going to lie. When, when we get done with that song, it takes me a minute to come out of it because it takes a lot of emotional energy to play like that. And I looked down at the set list and the programming was changed a little bit this evening. And I, I, thought, I thought we were bringing Tuesdale up. That's my bad. Okay, I apologize to you. I apologize to you. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take accountability for that. I messed up. I looked further down on the set list. You guys did not deserve to go through that today. Okay, and I apologize. Neither did Truesdale. I'm sure they were up. They were running. I. I apologize to you guys. That was. That was unfair. It was uncalled for. It was a mental error on my part. And I will take full ownership. And for the rest of this tour, I will be more aware coming out of these ballads. The carry-on set was nice tonight. That new bass is nice, isn't it? Well, when it finally was time for them to come out, Truesdale came and just absolutely murdered. I'm going to give them 25 to life tonight. That's... How did you feel about this performance as, as opposed to other ones earlier on the tour? Do you feel, what, tell me what happened. Well, um, you know, I, I felt good about it. it. Ladies, what did you feel? I felt strong. It was a little hard maybe to hear for some of us. I thought it was great. I felt good. This is day five in a row. So feeling good. Yeah, feeling good. I think we're loosening up and, uh, yeah, just getting it in our bones. Feeling, feeling pretty good. Thank you. And of course, an absolute, absolute pleasure. The one and only Victor Wooten came up and just. Yeah. No, I, 
I, I had to give a little pep talk in the locker room before the gig. I know there's a lot of, a lot of music school cats here. Okay, I know that. I know that sometimes on stage there can be the temptation to pander to the music student, but we know that you're looking to be impressed. I know that there's some sort of expectation, there's some sort of way that you could alter the gig. Vic is an instructor at, at a college. He's here, he, there's students here. Does he need to change his performance in order to do something different? But the, the, really, the, the fact of the matter is the, the pep talk I gave the team that we all leaned into was sometimes we just let the parts do the work, the parts are gonna do their thing. And, and we just focus on the energy in the moment. Vic, can you tell me how tonight was different than others for you? Because I feel like you really, you came as clean as any gig I've ever heard. I, well, I do appreciate that, Corey. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, my, my sound, the guy that I usually travel with came in and fixed the problem in my pedal board. And in doing it, at Soundcheck, he hooked up a looping pedal, which I had no intention of using but I can't remember what song we were playing. I heard another bass player playing. Two-timers. Two-timers, and I looked down in my, and, and my, going, oh, he remembers. Going into the third verse of two-timers. Mark it, Keel. Some kind of way my looper had looped something and was playing back. So I figured if it played on accident, I should at least try to do it on purpose. And so that's why, that's why I did it. I cannot believe how you did that was nuts. I love that. I know there are several members of the press here this evening. Here's how this is going to work. There's actually a couple of ground rules, though. If you break these rules, he'll break your legs. Keep it clean. We do not do a bit where people come up on stage. It just happened to happen the last couple of nights. It is not a normal thing. Okay, do not ask to come up here on stage. Tonight we have something planned after the press conference here. Here's how it's going to work. My tour manager, Corey Dubray, is right over here. He's got a microphone. Please state your name, publication. Come at us with your question. No holds barred. Anybody here on this stage, let's rock. Right here in the front in the glasses. I want to know, uh, the drummer, what is it like to be the baddest man on the planet Earth? That's literally... Are you ready for this? Well, I can tell you what what it's like standing between two of the baddest men on the planet. It's heaven, heaven, heaven on planet Earth. Now answer the question. Literally, uh, you have Victor Wooten, you have Sonny Thompson, you have Michael Nelson. These, to me, like the, these three entities, when I was in college in Minneapolis, I heard about Michael Nelson, what he was doing with Prince. I heard about what Sonny T, I was terrified to even look this man in the eyes. <laughs> and I met Victor in Serbia in 2004 when I was a kid. And, you know, there's nothing to say. These, these are the baddest cats, this entire stage. But yeah. That's nice. That's nice. What else we got? Berkeley Press, thanks for being here. Right there in the Corey Wong shirt. Hi there. A uh, longtime fan. My buddy and I have been front row at the last two Boston gigs you've had. And on January 28, 2020, we had DM'd you offering to pay for dinner. And if you guys wanted to join us that night, just wanted to say, um, even though the band has gotten much larger since then, and my bank account has gotten a lot, lot less in it, the offer still stands. Thank you very much. Thank you. You got Uber Eats? Rock some Zaz and come. If you get some pizzas, we'll, we'll go back. You can come backstage and eat with us. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, Sonny wants a prime rib. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Who else is here? 
We got Rolling Stone magazine right here. Thank you for being with us. Center part, like that. Let's go. Corey, Corey, lovely gig. I gotta say though, where's the piccolo solo, man? Where's the piccolo solo? That's that's the thing is, you know, you never know when you're gonna get a vacuum cleaner solo. You never know when you're gonna get a piccolo solo, you know? It's just not every night you get a piccolo solo, but I this is more of a cat's gig than a dog's gig, so we had Lampley take care of biz. Right there in the white, blue, and red collar. Hey, Corey. Um, my name is Nick Kearsett. I'm with Metric Modulation Monthly. Um, I Thank gotta you for ask, being here. bands too good. How many of them are robots? They can't all be real people, man. Yeah. I'm just, I'm out here. I'm curious. You know, it's I've heard about these all robot bands, and it's looking like you might be the only human on stage. Because I know Victor isn't human. I, I'll take that as a compliment. You know, it's there is. There are parts of your being that can become robotic. There are parts of your being that can feel mechanical, but it's about finding the emotion, but the execution of the mechanics and entering into the mechanics as something that you can see passing by every 16th note. You just decide when to stamp every 16th note. And it's up to you to, to insert your humanism into that. <laughs> I knew there would be like two people. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> but there, there are indeed no robots on stage other than this. Let's take another question. Right over there on the white shirt, the hat, glasses. Hello. So I make brass instruments, and I'm wondering what the... I think we're done here. Oh, yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> totally fair. Right, hold on, I'll, I'll totally let you. Fair. Talk. I'm, just gonna, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just gonna hand this back now, and uh, whoever. Sorry, next, go on. You make brass next. instruments. So I make brass instruments, and I'm just wondering what you're looking for in the perfect brass instrument. Uh, obviously, that can't exist, but really, it's a lot less brass? about the instrument itself, and it's about the player. <laughs> that being said, that being said, I want something. Normally, uh, the sort of instrument that is versatile versatile enough for a player to really most effortly express their voice through that instrument. That's it. Let's take one more question here. Let's take one more question. Right down here. First, first time seeing you. Uh, my question is for the drummer. I want to know how you tune your main snare, because that thing sounds so good. <laughs> Let's let's not let's not forget. He cranks it up. He says, "Is this good?" And I look at him and I say, "Do you think it sounds good?" Yeah. And he says, "I'll keep working on it." <laughs> and then he hits it a few more times. And I'm like, "Do you think that sounds right?" And he works on it a little bit more, and then it's good. <laughs> It, it is there's there's a certain resonance though the, the bottom head a little bit lighter a little less tension than the and we don't need to go all the way into it but it's a little less tension on the bottom than the top we got the roots EQ rings <laughs> tell you what I would love to take more questions this evening but even more so I would like to play one more song for you can we do that that's right